What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crafters. I'm David Wilson, and today we are going to talk about the basics of dot files. So uh, the concept of dot files may not be new to you if you're a viewer of this channel, but uh, just in case people out there who are watching this channel haven't really uh, learned about dot files yet or really understand what the concept is, I wanted to make a short video to sort of go through the idea behind uh, what it means to manage your dot files and to keep a repository containing your dot files. Uh, so first of all, what are dot files? Well, it is basically your personal crafted configuration that you have spent time to uh, to put together on your machine and you want to save it so that you can reuse it elsewhere. Uh, and typically your dot files are uh, text-based configuration files for the programs that you use. So uh, at least in Linux and Mac OS, many of the programs that you use will have textual configuration files that are stored in your home directory somewhere. And those files are loaded by these programs to, uh, to configure the program whenever it starts up. And helpfully, they are uh, uh, configured via text so that you can edit them directly and you can also check them into source control. So this is the type of configuration file that we're talking about today. Now you have to know that many programs don't actually provide you with nice uh, text formatted uh, configuration files. Some have their own binary, config binary configuration file formats, or maybe they store their stuff in some kind of global configuration registry somewhere. Uh, but uh, in my opinion, the best programs are the ones that give you the power over how you store and manage these uh, configurations in a way that you can edit them yourself, basically. Uh, also, uh, for what I would consider part of your dot files would be personal scripts. So if there's any script that you have written that is uh, created for the purpose of your day-to-day -day use, like some tasks that you have to do repeatedly, or maybe you know managing your, your system somehow, uh, these scripts would also be a part of your dot files because it's something that you want to have uh, with you all the time because it's part of your daily workflow. And uh, if you don't really know why the name dot files exists, well, it's because these configuration files typically have a period or a dot in front of the name. So like .emacs.d or .vimrc, uh, files like that. So uh, this is why we call them dot .files because this is sort of the naming configuration uh, convention for hidden files on Unix-based systems. Uh, these configuration files are made to be hidden so that they're not going to clutter up your folders, or at least whenever you're looking at a normal folder listing. So that's why they have a dot in front of them. So let's talk about some common dot files because maybe you haven't actually seen one before or real realized that they are there. So on Linux and Mac OS, there are certain dot files that you'll commonly see. Uh, the first two are related to the bash shell. It's uh, the dot bash underscore profile and dot bash RC. These two files are typically used to configure your uh, shell session whenever you log in, in the case of bash profile, or whenever you open a new terminal in, after you're already logged in, which is used in the case of bash RC. So these are basically scripts that are used to configure your shell whenever you uh, open it, basically. And then there's also the uh, configuration files for various editors you might use. Like, for instance, uh, Emacs has the .emacs.d folder, and Vim has the .vimrc file. I believe there's also a .vim folder you can have as well. Uh, these are uh, configurations for your editors, and typically they are meant to be edited as text. So it's useful to, to know that you can manage those in a certain way to make it so that you can share them among your systems. Uh, also, there's uh, the .git config file. I mean, this is not really a, a high priority one, but it's just when I was looking through my own dot .files fol folder, this was an interesting one where basically you're configuring how uh, the git source control program identifies you and then maybe some basic settings and whatnot. So uh, there's a lot of these single individual files that will be in your home directory for configuration purposes. Now, there's also directories that may be there that also start with a dot, like in the case of the .config folder. This is a uh, folder that is very common on Linux because it's part of the Linux desktop specification. I believe that's what it's called anyway. And the idea is that there is a, a central place where many programs store their configuration now. So if you are on a Linux-based machine and you go look at the, your .config folder in your home directory, you're going to see a lot of different folders under there for the different programs that you use. They're trying to store all of their configuration in this one location so that, it, so that it's easier to manage. Uh, so these dot files are not as common on Windows, 
Uh, but many, uh, well, the reason why they're not as common on Windows is because Windows has uh, mainly a convention where the configurations would either be stored in like the global registry, which is this sort of key value store that's stored in Windows, you know, configuration. Uh, or in like your program files folder, which is not really writable to users by default. So um, some programs will actually store uh, configuration files or dot files inside of your C colon slash user slash whatever your username is in your home directory or in this app data roaming directory that I've listed here. Uh, so, you know, anything that is a more modern program that is cross platform typically will try to store a configuration file in that location because that's what the convention is. Typically, you're storing these dot files inside of your home folder, whatever it is on your operating system. So just to show you a little bit more about what this looks like, let's take a quick look at uh, my own uh, configuration folder. So I'm going to my home folder here. This is Dear Ed and Emacs. And uh, I'm going to expand this so we can see all the hidden files. And now that you see, there's a bunch of folders here that are uh, that start with the the period, the dot. Um, and there's the dot cache folder, which has a lot of stuff in here that are maybe like transient or, or temporary configuration files for programs that don't need to be stored with the normal configuration. Uh, there's also, uh, like I mentioned, the the dot config folder. And if you if we jump into that really quickly, you'll see there's a lot of folders here that are for various programs that I use. And you'll see that many of them seem to be linked into this uh, dot dot files folder that uh, I have listed on this path here. I'll talk about that in a minute. Then there's also the emacs.d folder uh, and various other folders that are related to things. And then there's also individual files. So like we mentioned, there's like the bash RC file, there's a bash profile. If I open up the bash, bash profile file, I'm basically uh, deferring that to my dot profile. So you can see that there's just all these different configuration files that are at that home folder level. So um, what I'm typically doing is I have my own dot, dot files folder that I store a lot of these things in, and we're gonna talk in a minute about what that really means. So let me jump back over to my presentation, dot files one. All right. So uh, then the question then becomes, okay, so I know that I have these files on my system, uh, but you said that there's a way to manage them. So how do I do that? Well, um, the best way to manage your dot files is to keep them in source control. And uh, the way that you would do that is to, like I did uh, in my home folder, create some folder that stores your uh, dot files and then uh, turn that into a source control repository somehow. And then once you do that, you can check in those files uh, to that repository and then you can sync it between your computers or you could share it somewhere basically. Uh, the benefits of doing this is that you can easily sync your configuration between multiple machines. So for me, I have my configuration checked into a repository that syncs to GitHub. And then between the three machines that I use on a regular basis, I have that same configuration sync between those machines so that I have the same configuration and the same workflow between all those machines. And for me, that's very important because when you spend enough time trying to customize your configuration and get it the way that you like it, you wanna make sure it's usable everywhere. I also have some stuff uh, in there so that the behavior is a little bit different on different operating systems. So uh, if I have to use Mac OS or I have to use Windows, uh, I use Linux primarily. But if I have to use those other operating systems, most of my configuration will work, at least in Emacs. And then other programs, maybe I don't use them because they're not there on that platform. Uh, another benefit is that you can roll back to a previous configuration very easily if you break something, which is going to happen if you are tweaking your dot files a lot. Uh, you need to make sure that any changes you make are not going to be unrecoverable. Like, for instance, if you had a nice configuration for a program and you decided you want to change the way that you use it, then maybe it didn't really work out for you and you wanted to go back to the old configuration. Well, uh, source control will help you to do that because you can just either, you know, get rid of the latest commit that you made or maybe uh, go back to the uh, previous commit and pull those changes back into the current state of your, your, your dot files folder. So it's very useful for that, for managing the sort of the changes over time in your, uh, in your configuration. Also, you can experiment with very large changes to your dot files in branches. So uh, in many source control systems, you have this concept of creating branches which are like a, a separate timeline for the changes that you're making to your repository. And uh, if you want to make a big change, like maybe you want to switch to a new window manager or you want to switch to a new shell, or maybe you want to just like completely start over from scratch on your configuration for Emacs or Vim, you can just create a new branch and then make changes there. But then you can switch back to your main branch whenever you uh, need to do actual work before your new configuration is fully baked. 
So this is a very useful thing that you can do. I don't really do it that often, but sometimes it's necessary whenever I feel like what I'm going to do might be a little bit risky. And then finally, you'll have a log of the changes that you've been making over time and you'll never lose them. So if you have been building up this configuration over time with all these improvements you've been making, uh, you'll get to see how it's progressed over time. And you also won't lose the changes you've been making. They're going to be checked into this repository and you can sync them from anywhere. And uh, you'll just have them basically forever so long as you don't delete your repository. So I think this is a very uh, useful thing to do for anyone who's serious about configuring or customizing their configuration to their own tastes because you need a way to make sure that you're not going to lose that configuration after you've spent so much time uh, building it up. So the next question is, which program do you use to, uh, to, to use for source control for your dot .files repository? Well, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. However, I feel that it's better to choose one of the decentralized uh, source control programs. Uh, some of these options are like Git, which you've probably heard of before. There's also Mercurial and then Darks, which is not really as commonly used, but I think some people like it a lot. Uh, the idea behind these types of source control systems is that you do not need a server to uh, store your repository. It can actually just be a folder on your local machine. So for instance, with Git, what you can do is initialize a new Git repository in an existing folder. And then if you wanted to uh, use that on another machine, you can just copy that folder to the other machine. And then the same repository is available there. Now, the, the power of these things comes in whenever you're able to sync them between machines using the actual machinery of Git. And there are websites like GitHub and GitLab, et cetera, that allow you to push your repository to the remote site and then sync them between your machines. So um, the thing that you have to know here is that there are not as many hosts for Mercurial and Darks as there are for Git. Git is kind of the prevailing, uh, I guess, what you might call winner of the distributed source control race. So uh, the 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 best choice that you have at the moment is Git for storing your dot files and sharing them or keeping them synced with some kind of Git, Git host online. And this also becomes very important for publishing your dot files. Now, uh, this is kind of a scary thing for a lot of people because you're basically putting your personal configuration out there in front of other people in the world and you don't know whether they're going to like steal your personal information or maybe laugh at you because of the way that you set things up or whatever. But uh, in my opinion, it's always a net positive to have your dot files up on a repository on the internet. And the reason why is because it gives you this feeling of pride of the thing that you created. It's another thing that you can say, hey, this is a project of mine. I have my dot files here. Come check it out. Uh, you can you know, be, be very meticulous about how you create your repo, how you document your repo, and, uh, you know, basically which programs you use there. It's sort of like, you know, an indication of who you are, like what your tastes are as a person. I know it sounds a little bit ridiculous, but it, it is the case. I think a lot of people take a lot of pride in having their dot .files, files repo out there so that other can see, others can see it. The other thing is that people can learn from what you've done. Uh, I have my dot .file, dot .files repo out there. I think people have been taking pieces from it here and there. Uh, I think it's very useful to share the things you've done and uh, explain what you did so that people can learn from it. And s similarly, you can go to other people's dot .files folders, or sorry, repos and learn from them as well. So you, maybe you'll learn about programs or Emacs packages or Vim packages that you didn't know about. And you're going to go to their repo and, and learn about them and see how they configured them and maybe see how they use them. So it's very useful to share your dot .files and to also check out the dot .files of other people on websites like GitHub and GitLab. And uh, the nice thing about Emacs, if you use Emacs, is that you can take it even further than that and have your dot .files be written in a literate configuration style, which basically means you're able to uh, have your configuration interspersed with actual text so you could basically describe your, your configuration and how you use it and have it look like a nice document on GitHub or GitLab because they're, they're able to render org mode files. So if you look at my uh, GitHub repository, you will actually see that. So if I can open it up really quick, I will show you. So I'm going to go to my dot .files repository. And uh, you can see that I have a lot of folders here that are sort of dot .folders. And, you know, these are sort of the files that are necessary for, you know, putting in various places on my machine. But the important files are these .org files. So like my emacs.org file, I've described my whole configuration here in this org file. But the interesting thing is that all of these blocks are my actual configuration. These are the this is the configuration that I use on a day to day basis. So uh, emacs can make it so that you are able to, uh, you know, 
organize your configuration and explain it and sort of make it look nice in a way that is kind of appealing, at least in my opinion. And if you want to see the actual file on my local machine, uh, this is my Emacs configuration file where I have a bunch of different blocks for all the parts that you see there. And uh, th I have a video on this that I'll link in the description about how you can um, basically set up your org mode files to generate your dot files. And I'm going to do some videos in the future that go into more detail on that. So if you're interested in that concept, uh, we will cover that for sure. So uh, that was just a brief run through of the concept of dot files, why you should care about them, why you should try to have your own dot files re repo and why you should share it. So I want to do some more videos, just short videos like this to, to go through some other tips, like basically how to manage and share your dot files with Git. Like I've, I've shown you what I'm doing right now, but I'm going to show you how you can do it yourself to start from scratch, create your own dot files repo, move files into the, to it, uh, link them correctly, and then publish it onto GitHub. And then I'll do a video where we talk about different tools that make dot files management eas easier, like GNU Sto, which is a tool that I use for managing my dot files repository. And then later, I'm going to do a video talking about complete dot files management with Emacs. Uh, and this is going to be something that I'm working on uh, as a project where it will make it easier to manage all of your dot files using only Emacs, no external programs, uh, so that you can get the benefits of literate configuration and dot file folder management all together in one place, even on Windows. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And we'll see that probably in a, in a month or two as things go on. Uh, so anyway, I hope that was useful for you today if you don't really know much about dot files and you are interested in getting uh, started on that. Uh, finally, I'd like to thank my sponsors. Uh, these people have been so kind to sponsor what I'm doing here on this channel, and I'm, I'm very appreciative and very inspired by their continued support. If you're interested in supporting this channel, uh, definitely check out the two links I have in the description below. Uh, I'm on both GitHub sponsors and Patreon, plus I have a link to PayPal if you'd prefer to just do a one-time donation. So uh, definitely check that out. And uh, until next time, hope you have fun hacking on your dot files, and uh, happy hacking. See you next time.